well, it's pulled back a little bit. So, yeah, I think maybe traders on a lower time frame are being probably caught out. You can see, look at that long wick right there, yeah? So we've just had good news and we haven't had price follow through. You know, so many traders will say, oh, why, 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 why? What's going on? Or maybe I, maybe they're trying to trick me out. I should go long now. If there's no uh, reason to go long, then this is just, you know, getting traders to go short. So, for example, look at that one minute chart. Yeah. If you were trading on a one minute time frame chart. And you see a candle like that, what are you going to do? Yeah, you're going to obviously sell, isn't it? Right. Where are you placing your stop loss? Some traders on a one minute chart, you're not, you know, what I mean, most traders aren't going to have. Yeah, because that'd, that'd be a massive stop. Yeah. They're not going to have a massive stop. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, because yeah. for a one minute time frame trader, and there's mm. going to be lots of them, there's lots of scalpers, right? These, you know, this is a 40, a 50 pip stop is not something that you want to have. Mm. That's just that's just ridiculous for a, for a scalper. Like you're more looking at a trade where it's like you know maybe about you know three four five pips. That's that's more of your stops, right? So then, you know, once you start to um, the the market starts to pull back for the liquidity. By the way, this is known as an unfair auction as well. But I'll get into that another time. But yeah, and it starts to pull back. It starts to stop these traders out. And if you're if they're not trading with any stop losses or they're moving their stop losses now, all of a sudden, now they instead of risking maybe one percent, yeah, for maybe three or four pips, now they're risking maybe ten percent, fifteen percent on their account because they don't, they don't want to take this stop. Uh -huh. And all the market is doing is just basically pressuring these guys. Do you know what I mean? And it's going to eventually stop them all out uh -huh. before potentially going on its way. Remember, we were just talking about liquidity. The market, you know, in the short term, has to search for the liquidity. In the yeah. long term, in the long term, it reveals its hand. But in the but in the short term, it's really more about the liquidity side of things. And so, if there's a lot of banks and institutions that want to go short, yeah, they need what buy orders. Yeah, they need buy orders for them to, to to sell because in order to buy the dollar, they need to press sell. Yeah, they need buyers to take the other side of their trade. Right. And so where are the buy orders? So who is buying in the face of that big, you know, bearish candle? Who's buying there? No one. So there's likely no liquidity. Yeah below the market for the for prices to continue going lower yeah that makes sense mm -hmm. or not enough but then what is where is the, the buy orders is, is the question right where's the buy orders so if you're going short yeah where's your stop loss it's, it's got to be above right mm. if stop loss is above your stop loss is a buy order and the way that you lose let's say for example you risk 10 pounds yeah and your stop loss is let's say 15 pounds yeah when your stop loss gets hit you're forced to buy back at 15 pounds so then you lose five pounds that's why you know you're at a loss because you're thinking you can you can sell here and then buy back for five that's how you make money mm. sold for 10 buy back for five i've made five pounds but if you buy, if you if you sell here and are forced to buy back at fifteen, then you've lost five pounds. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so if the buy orders going back to liquidity are not below the market, then the stop losses are buy orders too, right? So they are the ones where anyone who wants to buy in for a cheaper price, yeah, this is where price is. Cheaper price can scale in the institution can scale in at cheaper prices, right? That's what they can do. Rather than buying down here, because this is expensive. Yeah. And they trigger these stop losses. They're forced to buy back. And if you are selling zero sum game, who are you selling to? Who are you, you know what I mean? It, who's on the other side of this trade? The institutions. Mm. I remember they got deeper pockets than, than most traders, right? They trade differently. So they're just scaling in. If they if if this is truly a move where over the medium to long term they want prices to go down to here then 
um, ultimately they're just looking to buy at cheaper prices while stopping everybody out. Also as well, at the same time, can you imagine how many traders are going long here thinking, oh yeah, I'm going to be clever and I'm going to start to buy now. And then traders start to buy in mm -hmm. and then that's liquidity as well because then they can start to push the market down and they've got enough liquidity to sustain the push to the downside. They didn't have enough maybe here, not enough liquidity down here, but they definitely will do as traders are placing their long traders, placing their stop losses behind these types of swings, right? You've got higher high, higher low, and then they stop loss there, put one there, put one there. So there's lots of liquidity being built up in these areas. Mm. So in the short term, so in the short term, that's why it's very difficult. I wouldn't necessarily trade these lower time frames because it's more driven by liquidity. Do you know what I mean? Yes, you do have great risk reward, right? You can potentially, if you pick this top here and only risk about two or three pips, you know, this would have been a fantastic trade. And in a short space of time, like in the space of what, maybe five minutes, you could have, you know, made you know, five, six, seven, eight times your uh, your money, right? That would have been an excellent trade. But the difficulty is on lower time frames is that the levels may not, um, you know, hold as well or like unlikely to hold as well. And like I said, it's more driven by more more liquidity rather than the um, than than the fundamental side of things. Mm. Mm. Yeah. So that's that. But there's a lot of traders being stopped out at the moment. You can see it. And I think a lot of traders are again scratching their heads and panicking and going, well, what's going on? But who knows? I don't try to figure out these things unless unless there's something has changed drastically again with the interpretation of the fundamentals. Any moves that go against me, yeah, I just look at probably more more of a buying opportunity to get in short again at levels. I'm not saying I want to get short there or anything, but I'm just saying that. You know, there's it's it's an opportunity to try and maybe try to add in on trades, you know, on a on a higher time frame. But let's see, let's see. I don't know what's what's been happening, um, and what the sentiment is. But um, but yeah, let's see, let's see if it draws in more traders to go long, and then stop them out. Maybe because what's today, Friday, isn't it? So next week, maybe next week might come. If nothing has changed in terms of, um, the market doesn't think. Or, or the market is, thinks that rate cuts have been, there's been too many rate cuts priced in, then um, eventually prices should still continue to want to, um, you know, go to the downside. But let's see.